Why does everyone in the hip hop community talk about drum brakes? What is even the point of using them? Today I'm going to show you why drum brakes are a fantastic tool in production, what they can do for you, no matter what type of producer that you are. My name is Sencho and you are watching In The Beat. The first reason that drum brakes are a fantastic tool in a production scenario is that each part of the drum kit sounds cohesive. Each hit was recorded in the same room at the same time with a real drummer. Overhead mics and room mics have the ability to tie sounds together in a way that sounds really natural. Which means that the kick and the hat and the snare and the toms will all sound like they belong together in the same family. which is basically impossible to replicate by assembling individual sounds from different packs the way that we do today. Also, older drum recordings tend to sound great, especially in the 70s in my opinion. Great drummers, great rooms, great mics, great engineers, all recorded to tape, come on. So yeah, we can chop up the break itself and have a cohesive sounding drum kit, or sometimes what I like to do is if I feel like the randomly assembled Frankenstein drum kit that I have going lacks a little cohesiveness. I'll just chop up a drum break and then layer in the kick, snare, and hat underneath my more modern sounds to glue everything together in a natural way. Now the second reason is purely convenience. Loops are not cheating. As with drum loops in general, you can skip the work of having to program the drums right away if you just wanna jump straight into the chords and the melodies. Sometimes I'll drag in a drum break if I wanna explore some ideas with a beat instead of listening to the metronome endlessly. The sound in the metronome is actually kind of the bane of my existence. I have heard that sound in my dreams before and it is awful. <laughs> Another very convenient factor in all this is that a good drummer will add in very subtle hits or pieces of syncopation that make the beats more detailed and interesting, which in turn makes your beats more detailed and interesting. You see, you get to benefit from their years and years and years of discipline, which is just always a good thing. And by the way, if you're liking this video, go ahead and give it a like and hit that bell for lots more of these videos delivered straight to your feed. And the third reason is nostalgia. If you wanna make music that pays homage, homage, homage. If you wanna make music that pays homage to another era, like the early 90s, for example, which is my favorite, the best way is to make use of the popular and available techniques that producers used back then. I grew up listening to Illmatic, Midnight Marauders, Ready to Die, all day, every day. And a core part of that original boom bap sound is drawn from drum breaks, from sampled drum breaks. Lately, I feel like I've been seeing a lot of people making boom bap beats again, which is awesome. I think the music industry and possibly the art world in general seems to behave in like these cycles. Like we start out with a certain style and then we move dramatically away from that style and then slowly it sort of finds a resurgence in some form. One aspect of creativity that I try to emphasize that's been crucial for me is the importance of periodically changing up your process so that you can keep your output fresh. Like no matter what style you make, try starting from a drum break, try chopping one up, try layering one underneath your typical sounds for some cohesiveness and depth. Try layering your modern sounds underneath your chopped drum break for some more punch and beef. I have so much fun making boom bap. It really helps me add variation to my normal process for programming drums and you know, it gives me a little little heartache along the way. <laughs> Please bring me back to the golden era. Drum breaks are here to stay and there's a lot of ways you can make them work for you. Have fun guys and we will see you in the next one. Take care.